Okay, so my title may be a little bit dramatic, but real talk, there are some huge misconceptions floating around about Ethereum 2.0. And if you watch this video and do not find it helpful at all, then I will personally apologize to you in the comments. So without further ado, my top eight misconceptions about ETH 2.0. Starting with misconception number one, that the phrase Ethereum 2.0 is still used to describe their upcoming upgrades. That is wrong because that term has been intentionally deprecated and they haven't used it for a while within the broader Ethereum research team. There was the great renaming in 2021 where they outlined the plan to sunset that term in favor of other ones with more specificity. In terms of what their new roadmap is called, there's actually a bunch of different names. As you can see, there's not one overarching term for their upgrades, but rather it's split into different portions. The merge, the surge, the verge, the purge, and the splurge. There's a lot of different moving parts being implemented in parallel, and they all serve different functions to improve Ethereum. Just looking at that diagram, I'm like, dang, that looks super ambitious and is such an expansive plan. How can they finish that on time? Well, that leads me to misconception number two, that the rest of the roadmap will be done in one to two years. Unfortunately, that's not gonna happen. And Vitalik himself admits on the Bankless podcast that it may take six years for all of it to get finished. I was just gonna ask as well the timeline. So Ethereum is six years old. Is How long is this gonna take? Is this gonna take another six years? I could definitely see all this happen in six years. Yeah. But before you go sell all your ETH out of disgust, hold up because he also mentioned that we don't necessarily need all of those pieces to have a highly performant network. He said we really only need the merge and the surge to be in a good state. If you remember, the merge moves Ethereum to proof of stake, and the surge implements sharding to help roll up scale. And the other stuff is mostly just polishing things so Ethereum can become the powerful world computer that was the vision all along. I'm talking millions of transactions per second, all while remaining super decentralized, ultra secure, and just a true solution to the infamous blockchain trilemma. That would be quite the sight to see when it's all complete one day. It would be like final form cell of Dragon Ball Z. But if you're like, okay, that's cool, dude, but give me scaling and give it now, then have no fear because of my misconception number three, which is that rollups are only a nice to have, that they are Robin instead of Batman. Nope, they are 100% the star of the show, and everything else just supports them. This decision to build around rollups was already in play back in 2020, when Vitalik wrote this post titled, A Rollup-Centric Ethereum Roadmap. He explained that Ethereum would be all in on rollups as their scaling strategy. And since then, we've seen a bunch of rollups go live, like Optimism and Arbitrum, both of which are usable and offer us cheap fees and fast speeds today. There's also Boba Network and Metis, which are forks of optimism, but they have their own token and some of their differences as well. All of those are under the bucket of optimistic rollups. But then there's the ZK rollups, which use cutting edge cryptography to be even more powerful and scalable than their optimistic counterparts. There are several projects working on this currently, like ZK Sync, Polygon Hermes, etc. But overall, they do require more work to implement, so it may be a year or two before they're ready for mass adoption. But in the meantime, existing rollups can already handle several thousand transactions per second. So when people say Ethereum can't scale, they are flat out wrong because Ethereum is scaling as we speak. Now, before we get to my next misconception, a quick shout out to our longtime sponsors, Crypto.com. If you don't have their crypto debit card yet, you should sign up for one using my link down below because we both get 25 bucks. I've been using mine for three years now and I'm a huge fan of how convenient it is if you ever want to spend a little bit of your crypto as if it were fiat. Anyways, back to my misconception number four, that the merge to proof of stake will make Ethereum super fast and that will make Polygon irrelevant. That's a big no. You may be surprised, but the move to proof of stake is actually not going to change the transactions per second at all. What? Well, technically it's gonna change it a little bit, but to us end users, the difference will be unnoticeable. The whole reason they wanted to switch to proof of stake is for better network security, decentralization, and efficiency, not for speed. So if you think that Ethereum's move to proof of stake is going to make Polygon and Matic irrelevant, then you are sorely mistaken. Because Polygon is actually acquiring and building a ton of different scaling solutions like Plasma, sidechains, and rollups too. 
So they are looking like the place to go for builders who want scalability, but also want to stay in the Ethereum ecosystem. And this is actually super similar to my misconception number five, that sharding is going to make Ethereum ultra fast. That is also not the case because Ethereum is no longer trying to make their shards support smart contract execution. That is what Polkadot does. And if Ethereum did that too, then there would be noticeable speed increases. But instead, they are only using their shards to increase something called data availability. That helps the network handle more data, which means rollups would be able to up their TPS from a few thousand to potentially 100,000 transactions per second. The Ethereum team is leaning towards this approach of just doing data sharding because that's much simpler to implement and it already gets us to insane speeds. Do they really wanna spend all the extra effort to do execution sharding? Maybe in the distant future, but it's definitely not needed for now. Now, if we take a step back, Several of these points are related to my misconception number six, that eventually we will all come back to the main layer one Ethereum network and do everything on here again. Well, I hope with my previous points, you can see that Ethereum is moving away from a monolithic approach to a modular architecture, where we end users do our thing on the layer two network, and then those pipe back to the base layer one for settlement and data availability purposes. This is a very different approach from Solana where they try to handle everything on the same network. Instead, a modular approach splits up different functions on different networks so they can each specialize on something and do it well. Some analysts argue that if any blockchain gets true mass adoption, they will have to use a modular approach because that's the only way they can get global scalability. But anyways, my misconception number seven is that after the merge to proof of stake, we'll have a fork of Ethereum with two different coins floating around. Kind of like back in the day when Ethereum Classic and Ethereum forked from each other. People think that this might happen when we do the move to proof of stake because all the Ethereum miners out there won't be happy that they're gonna be replaced. So they'll just keep on mining the old chain to keep it alive. But there's two big reasons why that won't happen. First is because of the difficulty bomb, which is hard coded into the Ethereum protocol. Basically that increases the mining difficulty so much that it'll be impossible to mine any blocks after it takes effect. So miners cannot just keep on mining the old chain. They'll have to create their own fork, remove the difficulty bomb, and then get nodes to recognize them as well. All of which are quite difficult to pull off. The second reason why there won't be a contentious fork is because all the capital on there would be worthless. Like there's billions of dollars worth of capital locked up across Ethereum DeFi. And if those DeFi protocols do not support or recognize a miner's fork, then those assets would be worthless on there, which means that the forked chain would be worthless too. So that's why this idea of a fork with a new coin is really not gonna happen. And miners could just go mine ETC instead if they wanted to. But in terms of this upcoming merge event, there's another misconception to note. My misconception number eight, that you can withdraw your staked ETH right after the merge happens. Because remember, people have been staking their ETH for over 5% annual rewards in anticipation of the move to proof of stake. But one big catch is that they cannot withdraw their ETH until we officially make the change. But actually, they're gonna have to wait a little bit longer even after the merge because withdrawals won't be possible until six months after and there will be an orderly process for it to happen. So it's not just a huge free for all mess with everyone trying to withdraw at the same time. Well, those are my top misconceptions. Did any of them surprise you? If you knew all of them already, then it means you must be really obsessed with crypto. If you didn't know all of them and want to learn more though, just check out Crypto EQ's guide on Ethereum's upgrade. I'll leave you a link below. Either way, I doubt this video changed your mind on Ethereum. If you already love ETH, you'll stay loving ETH. And if you already hate it, you'll stay that way too. Personally, I still love ETH and believe it's gonna take that number one spot someday for one simple reason, the burn. And to learn more about that thesis, watch this video I made before, or watch this one where I break down the million dollar opportunity that is layer two projects. I'll see you on the next one and cheers.